Okay, in lab four, we are going to talk about the sequential logic divide. Uh, there are three parts, and in the first part, we're gonna divide a flight attendant call system. So basically, once you touch the call system on a flight, the light will keep on until someone touch the cancel button. Okay, it won't be like the previous lab, which means you keep giving a input to keep the lights on. At this time, we have something we can use the, uh, the what we learn from the lecture, the register to store something between the input and the output. Okay, so let's see it. Okay, you can see the call button and cancel button. Okay, once you press the call button, the light can be on, and the call button released, it stays on. Okay, but the cancel button press light turns off. So here is actually one of the truth table or uh, for the for this divine. Okay, we're gonna see here where something uh if stored or latched uh for this uh for the system okay we have also something called a kernel state uh, which is quite different from previous lab or right, here one schematic design if you're interested you can try this one but we're still gonna do a very long code okay here is a sample code the, the bone code to give to you you need to finish okay so in the menu here, we can see we have input clock, call button, cancel button, and we have output, we call the light state. But be careful here, we have something called the rack, which is called the save state. Something is between the input output, okay? Something will get latched in our device. So you can see here, we can see here with the very case of call button, the cancel button is both 0 and 0, 1 and 1, 0 and 1, 1, what your code should be. Alright, at this one, in the very beginning, at this point, I give you a sample code for 2 B binary 0, 0, which means the call and the cancel button are both 0. Okay, you may wonder. Maybe with he in this part, if you can call button and cancel button are both off, now I touch it, the light should be off, right? But my answer is, it's not off, because that may depend on your previous, previous state of light. Think about when the call button and the cancel button are both zero. It could be the moment when someone just touch a call button and then relieve it before he touch the cancel button, right? But still, if 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 the time the, the call button and the cancel button are both zero, but the light is on, right? So which means, uh, what 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 do we have here? So the uh, well, safe state, the current state we have for zero zero, so it depends on something, right? So here comes our uh, one uh, uh, if else uh, uh, logic. How are we gonna write if else logic in the verb log? You can see here, okay? So two binary bit zero zero, the input case, we have the safe state equals light state question mark b1 prime b1 uh, colon and prime b0 semicolon so this is tells you if light state is 1 okay or safe state is 1 safe state equals here if else if light state is of or safe state if zero okay you can read if else in a very long way if you're interested you can google it but this is much more concise way i want to see okay which means 
if life state is one, faith state is prime B one. If life state is zero else, then the faith state is prime B zero. Okay, faith state become a letter one. All right, because in here it tells you the current state depends on your light state. Okay. So this is very beginning of using. Cause we can use this kind of a uh, logic, if else logic, a lot in this uh, lab four. Okay, try to understand it. So once you get those down here for zero one one zero, think about what if your code should put in here for zero one one zero and one one, and uh, the phase state we 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 go current state we get will be defined to our life state, okay? This is safe state if something was stored or, or latched in our device, okay? So uh, this is the demo for the part one. Uh, you can see here we have a call button if we touch it, the light is on. And this is the cancel button, we canceled it. And now there's nothing here. If we click cancel, there's nothing. But once I click start, it start and cancel. So uh, in part two, we're going to build a rising edge detector. So what is the rising edge detector? Let's see a sketchy graph by me. Okay, so let's see if the black line, black one represent the input signal. So and the red one is output, the detector. So for every time the the uh, the input from zero become one, okay. Uh, the eye detector just quickly shows one. And, uh, and from 0 to 1 and uh, back to 0 very fast. Just, uh, just like uh, you see a pump flash, pump, the flashing a pump, okay, pump. So, uh, uh, and that's how it works. So because we're doing a driving, so we only care about from 0 to 1. We don't care about this part. If from 1 to 0, the detector do nothing, okay. So let's see the code. So we have clock for sure and the signal. Also we have output because the out edge to show uh, whether we found a, a revving edge. Okay. And in here we have something new here. We use a flow clock. Okay, I will explain why we use that later, okay? So uh also we have fifth two bit fifth state and R state, and we have three different uh, 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 local parameter zero, change, and one. But be careful; those three are not just simply uh, bits, binary bits. Okay, there are more than that. And at this time, we uh, call the module. Uh, we can I, I can give it to you called clock div. Cause in this part, the clock we input here, the output of something called flow clock. We are trying to slow down the clock by this module. Okay, okay. And here comes the key part. So in here, you you define the viewer change and one are three parameters. Okay, we can shift from one to another. But you need to define what the logic behind it. Okay? I will give you one example for zero. Okay. Okay, you can see my code here. So for zero, if you began, we're gonna see a save state, a current state. Equals signal question mark change uh colon zero semicolon. I think we talked about what the meaning in the lab in the part one, but in here I'm still giving you some good explanation. So this line equivalent to tell you 
if signal if one if if on or if one okay fay state can move to state move to change elf elf just which means signal if nothing which means say current state move to stay here to stay in zero zero okay so but in the zero here the output you see is d zero if nothing so which means this is in the face of this corner here okay if in the future there one coming so I can move to another another vertex detector can move to another state uh, another parameter called change or I can uh, or there's nothing here for example uh, if I will here there's nothing behind I gonna still be stay stay zero parameter and output here is zero, okay. So I think the rest of it is called change and one. Think about what that means. Think about how it could work, okay. Both to I know the add revving add detector the function uh, shows on the port is very simple. But the design, the logic design behind it is, is a little bit complicated. Okay, you need to think about what if we change the one, what if code in here. Okay. Okay, all right. Uh, so this is the demo for part two. Uh, I have input signal for uh, from uh, this button. If I click it, if I can detect it, you can see the output uh, detector here. So I just click it. It just flash because you only detect when things are coming. I release, do it again. I keep I keep pushing, but it only flash for once. Okay, here we come to the last part. We're gonna do again. Okay, we're gonna build a LED display time multiplexing circuit. So since we know there are four LED display on the uh, circuit, but in the lab three, we only use one of them. And now we want to try to use all of them to display the same input one by one. So how are we going to do that? OK, so see here, we can uh, let them and zero represent one LED display, and there are totally four of them. You can see here, we can let them show up one by one. Okay, so let's see the very local here. So, in here, we have input clock, uh, input switch from F00 to F3. Those inputs are gonna are gonna show the different segments to display different numbers to of FFG, FFEG, and also we have one more output different from uh, lab three is uh, an which is LED selector is gonna decide which LED gonna light on. Okay, so there are four internal wire signal from in zero up to in three and i think for one example we give it to you we're gonna strictly forward to apply uh, the module build in lab three okay got name c1 giving input and output here so i think we'll also need 
another three uh, LED module. So here you go view line here. And at this point here, since they're gonna show up one by one, we're gonna build a display max by using a clock. Okay, let's look at the code. In the module display max, we have a clock here, and I can see the input wire for all of the uh, input wire for all for all of four here. And if you look at the code here, we have register, so our rack and the C next, okay. And you can see here once the input of our rack is different, and the different uh, here, the different and uh, here different uh, LED deflector will turn on. So that this part can show that it shows up one by one, okay. But if you really don't understand this part, it's okay. But you, you need to know how to apply them in your design. Okay, if it's a 2B00, it is one, them will be on. So one by one. Okay, and let's do a code here in my design. So basically, your hierarchy can be looks like this way. There are four of them, and each one of them is exactly the same work. What do you have done for lab three? Okay, and if you have behavior here, but one thing you need to notice, I add a slow clock of part two because on Verlog module, if I don't use slow clock, you're gonna see the four LED display show up together. But I have to use slow clock to slow down the clock to see the sequential effect. Okay, so one thing different here, we don't need to worry about that part because I do that only for for the demo to feed on the YouTube video. Okay, pretty much. So that's it. That's all about the lab, uh, lab four today. Thank you. Uh, this is a part three demo. After we apply uh, the flow clock into our uh, display max design, we can see that the input here for four LED shows up one by one. If I have a chain, the input here, you can change that.